Thank you for your question, Sarah. Here I have a diagram of what I understand the setup to be. You have mass one on the inclined plane with angle alpha and mass two hanging off the edge. So you said to analyze the, uh, the forces in the x and y directions. So let's do that on mass two first, because that's easier. Obviously, you have gravity pulling down this way with force M2G. And, uh, and it's going to be accelerating down, sorry, no, it's going to be moving down at constant speed, therefore zero acceleration. This means that the tension in this rope also has to be M2G. You'll have the M2G pulling down, the M2G pulling up. Even though you do have downward motion, there's no acceleration. So this tension equals M2G. Next, let's think about what happens around the pulley. For an ideal pulley like the one in the problem, the pulley can change the direction of the force, but it never changes the magnitude of the force. This means that this tension here is also equal to M2G. And it's operating at that angle theta, right? Based on properties of geometry and what happens when you have these parallel lines, this is also angle theta. Now we're ready to analyze what's happening with block one. You have the gravity pulling M1G down. You have the tension pulling M2G diagonally. So we can view that as an M2G sine alpha going up. And an M2G cosine alpha going sideways. Now this is getting uh, kind of crowded, so I'm going to draw it all again down here. You have mass 1, you have an M1G going this way, you have an M2G cosine alpha going this way, and an M2G sine alpha going up like that. Now here comes the most subtle part. That's not the only force. There's also the normal force pushing diagonally out this way, and the frictional force, which is proportional to the normal force. And the part of this problem where students are most likely to make the mistakes is in calculating uh, the normal force. You think, well, you've got gravity pulling down, and we think of the normal force as just resist resisting gravity. So it would have to be, if you've got M1G pulling down, you'd have M1G pulling up as well. That's actually not how it always works. That's true if I'm just resting something on a perfectly horizontal surface with no outside forces. But the way I, I, I tell students to think about it is, even though the table or whatever you're resting it on doesn't have a mind of its own, there's some variation as to how much force it can push. Uh, at, on the real micro level, that's more than you actually need to worry about. Uh, the molecules of the, uh, of the object and the molecules of the surface get pushed closer to each other, and so the nuclei, with both, which both have positive charges, will push harder more. All you need to know is that even though the surface doesn't have a mind of its own, it can somehow know how much force it needs to apply to, in order to uh, keep the object in contact, with the, uh, in contact with the surface as opposed to crashing through or flying out. And so what that's going to do, if I have this angle here, this is also going to be angle alpha, it's going to be forcing this way, and it's going to be enough to counteract gravity pulling it in. So this is going to be, force normal is going to be M1G sine, uh, sorry, cosine alpha. And I have to stop this here because I'm almost out of time for recording. <laughs>